Think of what's at stake in whether there is a God. Well, if anyone ever did prove there was a God, the first thing that would mean is that magic is real because a god is by definition a magical anthropomorphic immortal. You can have magic without a god, and there are some religions who do, but since gods are made of magic, then you have to have magic first, because that's what they're made of. Well, actually, gods are made of imagination, but I'm only thinking hypothetically, you know, assuming there's a god for the sake of your question. If it were a creator god, then things get a little more bizarre because that means that the evidence we follow doesn't really mean what it should because it's all an illusion created by God to confuse us or test our faith, I guess. But if fossils no longer mean that other species lived in the past or if all our genetic orthologs are somehow impossibly coincidental defying all imaginable odds and if radiometric dating no longer charts atomic constants because everything was created as an apparent illusion, then none of these facts would mean anything anymore. The existence of your God would have rendered life, the universe, and everything literally meaningless. And I mean to include everything in that, even the power of the human mind to reason and also morality. Those things certainly have no meaning whatsoever in a world created by your God. Though, of course, I wouldn't expect you to understand any of that, even if I were to explain it. If so, would he have a purpose for mankind? Human beings would be left to research and prove what it is. No, you wouldn't. Not if your God was real. Then you wouldn't have this big mystery that you have now, because any superior intelligence would know that you don't whisper the most important information for all mankind to one or two illiterate sheep herders, then bugger off and leave it to them to glean thousands of contradictory interpretations and violently conflicting religions which can't agree on anything whatsoever. A wise God wouldn't want anyone to believe anything on faith, either. And if a righteous God were going to judge us at all, it would be on our actions, not our thoughts. A just God certainly wouldn't judge us on what we believe. If God were real, then we wouldn't have thousands of different denominations, and they wouldn't all look exactly like mindless contradictory fables and horror stories made up by superstitious, willfully ignorant fools playing make-believe. Maybe some hypothetical God could have a purpose for mankind, and maybe not. But what purpose could that possibly be? The idea of a purpose is obviously for man's benefit, not God's. If it was a God that created the entire universe, then I would say that it can't have any purpose for us and doesn't even care if we know that or not. Because this hypothetical God would, has given us a realm of 78 billion light years across, but he keeps us in a tiny terrarium, no greater than a child's ant farm, one from which there is no escape. It's like we're beta fish in a cup at the pet store, and the only hope we have of finding a new home is if we can survive the jump to another appropriately wet cup in another pet store in some other town. If we had a purpose, it couldn't be to be doomed to kiss the ass of an indomitable yet somehow inexplicably insecure, invisible tyrant for all eternity. What kind of purpose would that be? You wouldn't even need to torture us to, for that to be damnation. So if your God was real, I freely admit that I wouldn't want anything to do with it. That's why when I still believed in God as a child, I prayed to him and asked, why can't I just die? and stay dead forever, you know, like everything else does, like we're supposed to. Fortunately, that prayer was answered, as if by a voicemail message saying that I've reached a number that is invalid or no longer in service. Eventually, I came to realize there was never any God to take my call. And that's the only answer that makes sense. They could no longer hide behind atheism or agnosticism. They would be without excuse if they chose not to pursue why they were born. It is not even possible to hide behind atheism. That doesn't make any sense either. And besides, I'm not the one who is hiding. I don't have a required conclusion like you do, so I don't fear truth like you do. I'm the one who chose to pursue this where you have not, because you won't follow the evidence wherever it leads. You are pretending, and consequently you are obviously the one hiding from the truth. At some point, most people wonder why they are here. What's the purpose of human life? Yet, like Carl Sagan, they live and die never knowing the truth, or even that they could have known. Blind, baseless speculation is not truth. Truth is whatever is concordant with reality, and that eliminates everything in the Bible. 
Sagan limited himself only to truth, to things he could show that he actually knows, where you have chosen to avoid truth, holding instead to empty assertions of irrational, unsupported, and impossible, contradictory, foolish nonsense, and pretending to know what no one even can know. If you did know it, there would be some way to demonstrate that knowledge so that we wouldn't be expected to believe you just because you said so, and we wouldn't have to gullibly believe your farcical fables either. Remember what Sagan said, in science, the only sacred truth is there are no sacred truths. Arguments from authority are worthless. Whatever is inconsistent with the facts, no matter how fond of it we are, must be discarded or revised. That eliminates the entirety of your belief system, because nothing you say or believe counts as truth. A deceived world has been kept from knowing the vital missing dimension to resolving all mankind's problems. Scientists, theologians, educators, and philosophers have remained ignorant of the truth of why man exists. Only accurate information has practical application, so believing things that aren't true isn't going to solve anyone's problem. But you say the people who do all the studying, the intellectual expert scholars, don't know anything while random idiots and liars like you pretend that wisdom is foolish and that only the fools are wise? That's how religion reverses everything. And just remember that ignorance isn't just what you don't know, it's also what you won't know. Ignorance is what you ignore, and you have to ignore an awful lot to make believe what you pretend. And yet this awesome truth, this amazing knowledge has always been available, but most have not known where to look. If there was a God, then we would all know where to look, and the proof we find would be unambiguous, not subject to interpretation, because it wouldn't rely on or allow faith. It would be objectively verifiable. But you think that all the centuries of scholars uh, able to read in Hebrew, Greek, and Aramaic who have studied not only the fables themselves, but their histories and cultures of origin, none of them know as much as you? A narcissistic cult leader in Ohio who obviously doesn't know dick about Jack? I would say that you're full of yourself, but it seems you're full of something else. This is revealed knowledge, unattainable to all whom God has not called to learn His truth. Then it's not revealed knowledge, it's secret knowledge. Except that it's not knowledge either, since it can't be demonstrated. That's also why it isn't truth, since it can't be confirmed. Nor does that matter, because you're saying it doesn't matter what we study or how much we know, because God decides who he's going to infect with the confusion of your delusion, and any prior knowledge is therefore meaningless. You've also admitted that it's not possible to discover this otherwise through you know, objective study. So it isn't the investigative expert scholars who are ignoring things, you are. The, your entire belief system and your empire of oppression are all built on lies, things even you know are false. You and your ilk are the ones trying to deceive the world, but you can't fool them all. Your cult is coming down because your sheep aren't all as stupid as you are, and they're starting to figure you out. Realize that disproving evolution automatically proves God's existence. No, it doesn't, stupid. And disproving creationism wouldn't prove evolution either. Both of these options and any other possibilities need to be evidenced individually. It's not enough to show that another answer is wrong. You also have to show that your answer is right. Because what if the universe is the equivalent of a computer-constructed matrix wherein program requires that every solar system like ours must have at least one inhabited planet? That's not any more ridiculous than imagining an infinitely old and isolated genie who sat around for an eternity before he decided to conjure reality with an incantation spell. What if extinctions and biodiversity are governed at the cellular level by competing patterns of intelligence hidden in the DNA? A version of this idea was even recently proposed at the Royal Society of Scientists in London. So how do you show evidence of either of these ideas? You can't just disprove the one that is supported and replace that with one you know isn't supported, especially when we already know that that can't be true. You have to show that your idea has merit too, and it doesn't. You're simply combining logical fallacies, starting with your sentence, which is a non sequitur, and then you use your staple arguments from ignorance and personal incredulity. You don't understand science, so it can't be true. Followed by question begging, the logical fallacy of the circular argument routing back to the assumed conclusion, which in your case is also the fallacy of questionable cause, also known as the false cause or confusing cause and effect. This combination of fallacies is known informally by another name, the God of the Gaps, where you think 
that anything that is unexplained is explained by God. Understand that according to the National Academy of Science, it is no longer practically possible to disprove evolution as a whole. Evolution is as much a certain fact of nature as gravity, atoms, cells, germs, oxygen, and tectonic plates. But if you could disprove evolution, that wouldn't lend any credence at all to your unsupported alternative, which is not even possible. Not just because it defies both physics and logic, but also because no such possibility has ever been shown to exist, and each of the testable claims have been disproved. But even if creationism hadn't already been disproved, if you could somehow disprove evolution, that would only mean that the issue of biodiversity was unexplained, not that it is explained by magic. Explanations must be testable and potentially falsifiable. You can't test the supernatural, so magic doesn't qualify as an explanation. In light of intolerance disguised as political correctness, let's ask, how soon before bringing the facts, the truth of God's existence or His creation, which necessarily debunks evolution and atheism, is called politically incorrect and intolerant hate speech? all while scorners who outright attack God's existence and thus God Himself, as well as His creation account and creationists, are deemed open-minded and enlightened? The answer is never. It seems you don't know what political correctness means or anything else, really, and so you're going to be determined not to understand this either. But creationists are the epitome of closed-minded stating loudly and proudly that they will never change their minds no matter how much good, solid proof there is to the contrary. This, by the way, is known as the logical fallacy of invincible ignorance. Don't you love that? Although many creationists fit that description, I think the name was actually inspired by this guy, who even after he loses one leg and both arms in a fight, he still says, I'm invincible! You're a loony. This invincible ignorance is how closed-minded creationists are, and obviously those opposed to that are comparatively open-minded. But the fact that you make believe fables over facts is not hate speech by itself. You have to throw in your intolerant judgments along with it, and you have a lot of them. You know how your restored Church of God keeps white people and black people segregated and you don't allow them to dance together or date each other? This is all too common with conservative cults like yours, like endorsing child abuse as a means of discipline. Haven't you ever noticed that the word intolerance is typically preceded by the adjective religious? They're almost always seen together. There are several statistical studies indicating that the more religious one is, the more bigoted they're likely to be. And on the other matter, you can't bring facts or truth of God's existence because neither one exists. But there is no problem correcting lies and attacking the non-existence of imaginary beings because fortunately, blasphemy is a victimless crime. But, despite persecution, we never fear, nor should you, scoffers who don't fear God and reject all proofs that He exists. We do fear for them. Don't worry about us. We literally have nothing to be afraid of. Except for you cry bullies pretending that you're being persecuted. It's not that we reject all proofs that God exists, it's that you haven't provided anything to reject. See, when you say you're going to prove God's existence, I understand proof to be an overwhelming preponderance of evidence. And evidence is a body of facts which are positively indicative of or exclusively concordant with that one available option over any other. And you use the word fact and truth a lot, but you don't know what either of those words mean either. For example, you keep saying true facts when you really only talk about unsupported speculation or interpretations that you just pulled out of your ass. But a fact is a point of data that is either not in dispute or is indisputable in that it is objectively verifiable. So if you want to prove God, first provide a definition of what God is and propose a set of empirically testable and falsifiable predictions based on the supposition that God exists. Then produce test results that match those predictions and are more parsimoniously explained by God's existence than any other hypothesis. And don't rely on logical fallacies or your own incompetence to do that. You haven't done anything like what I suggest. All you have done is make false claims showing how little you understand about science or how to think logically. God will soon prove to all mankind that He exists by supernaturally intervening in world affairs. How would we know whether anything was ever done supernaturally? 
Why can't God just show up so we know it's Him? Like back in 2001, God could have appeared in downtown Manhattan, standing 100 meters tall where He could catch the jets heading for the Twin Towers and gently set them on the ground without hurting anyone. Everyone would have seen it, and, and we could all be sure that it happened, and it would convert a lot of the uh, terrorists, perhaps, as well. And it, this kind of evidence would be good enough even for me. So why is it that everything God ever does looks exactly like something that probably would have happened anyway, so that we can never be sure if anything was ever supernatural? Why does it always have to look exactly the same way as it would if God was just pretend? He will demonstrate this to the entire world in awesome ways. Before the end time is over, no one on earth will be an atheist. Incredible miracles done by God and the devil's servants will remove all doubt. So Satanists have magic powers too, do they? Let's not forget that Jesus said his second coming was supposed to be back when some of his apostles were still alive. Not all of them, some of them, and that's important. And it means that he's about 1950 years late. So can I get an expiration date on this alleged prophecy so that we'll know when or whether your hypothesis has failed? Because a goal without a deadline is just a dream. And before we can take this seriously, we need two things. One, evidence that it is at least probably true, and two, a way to potentially falsify it if it's not true. If what you're saying is true, and when has that ever happened, then what should we expect to see over what period of time? And if what you're saying is total horseshit, like everything else you've said in the series, then when will we all know that so that you'll finally admit it? You need both of these things, not just one. You gotta give me something, because if it can't be falsified if it's false and there's no, nothing to apply that it's true either, then we got fucking nothing to work with. Just another of your mistaken interpretations of the same old fairy tales we already know got everything wrong. Ask, what if God revealed in advance what he plans to do? Would you not do everything in your power to secure that knowledge firmly in mind so you are ready when he does? Or would you rather be blindsided by this great God, willing to roll the dice that maybe he does not exist if you just say so? To those who choose the latter, the greatest events in history will slam into them with incomprehensible force. Same to you, buddy. I'll take my chances because there is no chance that your God exists. None. It's not enough to point out that the Bible said no man would know what you pretend to know. Instead, you should remember that Jesus said he also hoped that his second coming wouldn't happen in the winter. So even Jesus didn't know what you know either. Even he was going to be blindsided by his God. He also obviously wasn't thinking globally. He didn't know that when it's winter in Israel that it's summer in Australia. He didn't know there was an Australia because he didn't know that the earth is a globe. He thought it was possible to see all of the kingdoms on the earth at once if you could get to a high enough altitude at the center of the earth. That's possible on a disk, but on a globe, the center of the earth is in the core. That's a great depth, not a great height. Now, I get that heaven is supposed to be pretty high up there, but Jesus obviously hadn't been there because it doesn't matter how high up you go on any mountain like the Bible talks about, you can't see all the kingdoms on a sphere. Jesus didn't even know what the smallest seeds are that the farmers of his time were using, or when figs are in season, you know, things common people of his time already knew and he didn't. Jesus told his people to ignore some of God's commandments and not to wash their hands because he didn't know about infectious pathogens either. He thought diseases were caused by demons conjured by incantations. This is the source of your prophecy, and you want me to take you seriously? As little as Jesus knew back in the first century, being no more than a primitive cult leader just like you are, I have to weigh that against the bewildering inanity that I've heard in a couple of hours of listening to your videos, and I think he's got you beat. Remember when you said that according to a blood chemistry test that man's closest relative is the butter bean? What kind of blood test can you do on a plant, Mr. Pack? That's not just everyday dumbassery. That's such a level of stupidity that it qualifies as an accomplishment. So knowing your level of ineptitude, Jesus and I both would have to be pretty fucking stupid before I could believe that you know more than he did, assuming he ever existed at all. If you choose not to know, remember this was your choice. You knew exactly what you did. That's right, I do, and you don't. A final all-important question arises. Which is worse? 
atheists who refuse to admit God exists and he calls fools, or those who do accept God exists but do not diligently seek him. Which is worse? Let's turn it around to which is better, your hypocritical sycophants or rational thinkers honest enough that they won't pretend to believe what they know can't be true. The Bible says, He that comes to God must believe that He is, and that He is a rewarder of them that diligently seek Him. Jesus said, Ask, seek, and knock. For everyone that asks, receives, and he that seeks, finds. And to him that knocks, it shall be opened. Because the way it works is that once you start pretending that there are voices in your head reading all your thoughts, then you'll be convinced that there's always someone listening whenever you're talking to yourself because you're causing your own delusion. The fun part is when Jesus said that you can do anything that he's done and more, yet in all the centuries since, not one mountain has ever leapt into the ocean because anyone told it to. Because it's all bullshit. Jesus promoted the power of pretend, and his offer that anything that anyone ever asks will be answered has a pretty obvious flaw to it. Offer me everything I ask for. Anything you want. <laughs> I want my father back, you son of a bitch. Come on, Mr. Pack. Your God can't even tell you how much change I have in my pocket. If it's true that everyone who asks will receive, and God can do absolutely everything, then have him tell me hello. The Bible contains God's instruction to mankind. He expects those willing to read it to prove all things, hold fast that which is good. Or the margin says, right. Surely God would not expect that we assume His existence, but prove everything else from His Word. That is His position, actually, because the Bible says that you're supposed to assume everything else through logical fallacies like circular reasoning, but you are to believe the priests without question, so thou shalt not put God to the test. Read our free booklets, Does God Exist? and Bible Authority, Can It Be Proven? Also, our free book, The Awesome Potential of Man, explains God's master plan for you and all mankind. You'd be better off reading my book, Foundational Falsehoods of Creationism. I only wrote one book to your eight on Amazon, but I get a lot better reviews than you do. <laughs> yours are pretty bad. And my book is also ranked a lot higher than any of yours. So despite your professional televised marketing and owning your own publishing company, it seems my one book has still beaten your best. Do not miss the next broadcast answering, Can a Christian Believe Evolution? It will change you. Yeah, you said that about this series too. You said it would convince me that there is a God, but everything you say fails. And while it is tempting to build an easy career out of correcting your constant parade of errors, I'm done with you and have nothing left to prove. So this will be my last video targeting you. Though I will miss our little talks. I will, however, point out that many of the pioneers of evolutionary biology, as well as some of its most notable advocates and defenders, were, and some still are, Christian because there are many different brands of Christianity and you don't get to force your blinkered, contrived, and misguided interpretations on everyone else. I should also point out that the last few popes have endorsed evolution and that the current one says that evolution is definitely true and that God is not a magician with a magic wand. And before you discount Catholicism, let's not forget that the Catholics outnumber every other Christian collective combined. That's every kind of Protestant, Jehovah's Witness, Mormons, everybody, all together. The majority of Christians, even among them, accept evolution as one of the tools God used. So can a Christian believe evolution? Most Christians do. Your dwindling and diminishingly scarce little cult of dogmatic bibliolaters does not dictate to the mainstream. This series has not been a mere case for God or a case against evolution. With irrefutable, undeniable proof, you have seen both atheism and evolution exposed and destroyed as fictions created by men who refuse to obey God. Actually, what we have seen is how easily your alleged proof could be refuted, such that evolution is still the foundation of modern biology, revealed as an 
undisputed, demonstrably observable fact worldwide, while your imagined authority has been denied, and atheism remains as the only rational option. The Nobel Committee will not be contacting you about your proof of God, because the only thing you've proven is your own incompetence. Winston Churchill said, Men occasionally stumble over the truth, but most pick themselves up and hurry off as if nothing ever happened. You have heard truth. Not from you, I haven't. It's not just that so much of what you've said is factually false and otherwise nothing but empty assertions of impossible absurdity, but more importantly, that apart from a couple of trivial peripheral points, you've not said anything that was actually true, nothing you could show to be. It doesn't matter that I showed how most of what you said is false. It is that you haven't been able to show that there is any truth in what you so blindly asserted without any idea what you're even talking about. In fact, what truth could be greater? Anything, everything that can be shown to be true would be better than what you did here, Mr. David C. Pack of lies. The only value any information can have is how accurate you can show it to be. And if you can't show that it is accurate at all, then it has no value at all. And that's the best I can say about the few things you said that I didn't disprove. I didn't have to because there was simply no truth to it. And that's the ultimate failure of all religions. Through reason, science, plain logic, and scripture, we have absolute proof that only a being of supreme intelligence could stand as designer and architect of the universe with all its complex life, including the pinnacle, the human mind. Now, what will your mind do with so much undeniable proof? Well, that is the question that prompted my video series, disputing, refuting, and absolutely disproving your supposedly indisputable, irrefutable, absolute proof of God. And now you say it's undeniable, but I have to deny that too. Not to be contrary, just being honest, since none of your fallacious nonsense qualifies as proof of anything but your own ineptitude. I also exposed your circular reasoning, pseudoscience, and citations of fairy tales, so that there is no reason, and really no way, that you could convince any educated, rational person of this magic imaginary genie of yours. There evidently is no God, Mr. Pack, nor could there be. So, with all due respect, shut the fuck up. <laughs>